I'm going to show you. I'm going to show you because remember now, in order for them to be a channel of blessing, there must first be something in the channel. Okay? Now, when they first cast out, there's nothing in the channel. See, but now, through the Spirit of God, which they will have in the kingdom, you see that? Now when they go out and cast, there's going to be a what? A multitude. Okay? So all of those things has a, it's a type and shadow of what will happen out here for them. All right? Yeah, we'll, we'll get to that. We'll get to that. Not to compare Jesus to worms, but it's like fishing without worms. And I don't fish, but yeah. I guess you yeah. have a bait. Gotta have a bait. <laughs> you gotta have a bait. Yeah, it's some kind of whether it's a, a, a lure, a bait, uh, uh, or it's alive. Yeah, you gotta have something on there. You just can't throw the hook out there. Yeah. It said that that time was often the third time he did it, and three is always meaning something. See, up spiritual completion. Yeah, yeah, yeah. How about the hundred and fifty-three? The hundred and fifty-three fish. What uh oh that he caught yeah 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 it's, we, it's a uh we and, don't know but we think it's the number of nations that were yeah yeah and uh we'll get to that because it's a, it's it's yeah some things in there right. yeah 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 <laughs> because there's some things in there that when you when you study it out there, it's going to be an example of not just not only the nations there. But also, and what they will be, what the nations of people will be doing as it pertains to their authority. Okay, so, but yeah, we'll get to that. Go back to Colossians one. Go back to Colossians one. Look at verse uh, twenty twenty four. End of verse twenty four. Uh, uh, which is behind of the afflictions of Christ and my flesh for his body's sake, which is the church. Whereof I am made a minister according to the dispensation of God, which is given to me for you to do what? Fulfill the word to fulfill the word of God. Now, watch this. In other places, Paul said the dispensation of what? Grace. Grace. But he said the dispensation of God because God is the God of grace, okay? So, excuse me, so God is dispensing himself, okay? The dispensation of God which is given to me for you to do what? To fulfill the word of God. That's why Paul can say in 2 Timothy 2 verse 7, uh, consider the things that I say and the Lord give thee understanding in all things. Okay? Because Paul, what does it mean to fulfill? Complete. Complete. Right? Complete. And this is the, the, this is the uh, uh, issue with some people who think that the law is still in position because they go to Matthew 5, 17, which says, Jesus says, Faith that I have come to destroy the law, but to do what? Fulfill. Fulfill. Yeah. And not one jot or tittle of this law will pass. You know, so so what they fail to realize is Christ has Christ has already what? Fulfilled the requirements of the law. He kept them perfectly. That's why Paul says in Romans 10 and 4, for Christ is the end of the law for righteousness to all them that believe. Why? Because he's already fulfilled the requirements of the law. He's fulfilled it, okay? Now, Paul completed the Bible. Second Timothy was the last book written, okay? So Paul fulfilled the word of God. Now, when he watch, watch this now. When he fulfilled the word of God, look at verse 26. Even the what? Even the mystery which had been hid from ages and from generations, but now is made manifest to his what? This is the this is the point and this is the goal of the Paul fulfilling the word of God because there was a mystery that was hid from back here that nobody knew. So the fulfilling of God's word had to include this mystery which he gave to Paul because he says, For me, given to me for you. To fulfill the word of God. So Paul has Paul has now God Jesus has now given Paul the, the completion of his word because now he's included even the what? Even the mystery. Okay? Yes, I do. Oh, okay. I was gonna say maybe uh, because we put our faith in Christ for the, and the faith of Christ is what did it. Exactly. It'd be kind of like saying, I gotta get a hundred miles away from here and I gotta do it in, in an hour hour. You're not going to be able to do that yourself, but you can jump into a vehicle, exactly. that will do it. Yep, that's and a good point. And your faith in that vehicle and that faith of that vehicle. Exactly, exactly. And, and it's a good point because a lot of times our faith in Christ wavers based on our situation. Yeah. But his faith, which is what saves us, never wavers on the yeah. cross. It never wavers, all right? 
And so, and so that, that's a good example. So understand that in order for, for, for God to fulfill and complete his word, he had to include the mystery. Okay, go to 1 Corinthians chapter 2. And Pastor, while you're going down, it's marveling over Paul and how God entrusted his word. That mystery which was hidden so, since the beginning of the world. Uh -huh. Even Jesus didn't know it, right? He limited I mean, himself. Uh -huh. yeah, but I, I'm just saying, what a man of God that he uh -huh. would impart that word, that mystery to Paul. Uh -huh. It's just amazing. Yeah, it's yeah. just amazing. And then when you look at Paul's history yeah. mm -hmm. and the man he was yeah. and how it just did. Yeah, that's why we, and, and I oftentimes say we just got to be careful who we point fingers at yeah. because God would choose whom he will. Yeah. And, 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 and now we've all been chosen by the gospel. Okay, We've all been chosen by the gospel. So now when we, uh, uh, when we learn the word of God, we have the same responsibility as Paul. Because we've all been called by the gospel. Okay? Now that we know truth, we have the same, uh, maybe not to the point of what Paul had it, but we have, we have the same knowledge because we have the completion of God's word. We have the same, we face the same persecutions to an extent. Now, obviously, Paul faced more than what we did, but um, we still have those same things that he did as far as the sufferings, the persecutions, the rejections, uh, the people, you know, saying all kind of crazy things about us, how foolish we are, how crazy we are. We have that to a certain degree. Okay. But he had to lay the foundation. He had to lay the foundation. So the person who lays the foundation probably is going to get it much, more, much worse than everybody else, just like with kids. Uh, the firstborn child is probably going to get it worse than everybody else. <laughs> You see that because hopefully, uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I thank God for my older brother because he did a lot of things that I knew not to do because he did. Okay, so he got the, he got in trouble and was the sacrifice for for me. So I thank God for him. So 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 uh, a lot of times understanding that uh, Paul obviously had some afflictions and sufferings that we may not ever have to face. You know, especially in this country, uh, as of now, nobody's going to jail for preaching the gospel. Okay, mm -hmm. and so understand, yeah. Paul did. Not yet, okay, yeah, that's what I say. Not yet. <laughs> that's why I say not yet. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Stay tuned. Huh? <laughs> yeah, that's why we have the freedom now to preach the gospel in this country as of right now. Okay, so 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 understand there's some afflictions that we still face though. We still face the rejection of friends and loved ones, and you know which Paul probably did too to the tenth power. Okay, <laughs> but understand that when Paul is talking about, he's talking about the mystery, the foundation that he's laid. Okay, and this mystery is what we preach even today. I, I just like you to go back and tell me what scripture that was you saying where Christ said that He fulfills the, the law for those who believe, Read. something like that. Romans chapter ten, verse four. Okay, thank you. Yes, Romans 10, verse 4. For Christ is the end of the law for righteousness to all them that believe. Because remember now, and you could you could put that next to that, when you write that down, put that, put Deuteronomy 6, 25. And then you could put Matthew 5, verse 17 and 18. Those will give you references, okay? Because Deuteronomy 6, 25, they, uh, uh, Moses said, For it be our righteousness if we continue to keep the commandments and judgments of the Lord. Mm -hmm. So their righteousness came based on how they kept the law. In Matthew 5, Jesus says, Thank not that I have come to destroy the law, but he really magnified it. Because adultery was committing the act back here. When Jesus came, he said, If you think and lust after a woman, you've committed the act. Mm -hmm. So he came to enhance the law. Okay, and he says that I'm, he didn't come to destroy it, but I came to fulfill it because right. all the things that you can't do concerning the law, I can. That's that's what he came to do. He fulfilled it. Then you get to Romans ten and four. Now the, the the mystery is that Christ has fulfilled that law for all those that believe, right? Because we can't keep it, but he did. That's what who we put our faith in, and our righteousness comes from Christ, not the keeping of the law. 
And you're saying all that the sins that he did in that law he fulfilled that. He fulfilled that. He, when he died on the cross, his blood, has, he shed his blood and paid the price for all of that. Yeah. Absolutely right. Look at uh, 1 Corinthians chapter 2. Look at 1 Corinthians 2. Look at verse number uh, 7. Because when Paul fulfilled the word, he spoke, fulfilled the word of God, it says, even the mystery. Look at 1 Corinthians 2, verse 7. But we speak the wisdom of God in a what? The even the what? The hidden. the hidden wisdom, okay? Which God ordained before the world unto our glory, which none of the princes of this world knew. For had they known it, they would not have done what? They would not have crucified the Lord of glory. You see that? So what we speak is the... Wisdom, but not only the wisdom, but the what? The hidden wisdom, okay? Now, go back to verse 1 of chapter 2. Uh, uh, verse 1 here, 1 Corinthians chapter 2. I like this when Paul says this. And I, brother, when I came to you, came not with excellency of what? Or of wisdom, declaring unto you the testimony of God. For I determined not to know anything among you, save Jesus Christ and him what? Crucified. And him crucified. Right, look at verse 4. And my speech and my preaching was not with enticing words of man's wisdom, but a demonstration of the spirit and of the power. Why? That your faith should not stand in the wisdom of who? Man. But in the power of who? God. Amen. But so many people today, their faith stands in the wisdom of what their pastor says. That's, right. That's, right. That's why when you give them the word of God, because you're speaking against their pastor, they get really indignant. Okay? But understand that our, our faith should not be in the words of men. That's why I tell you all the time, don't what? Don't take my word for it. It's your job to study it out. My job is to give you truth. Your job is to study it out. If there's something that does not agree with the word of God, hey, hold me accountable. I'm okay with that. Right? Go back to, uh, go to Ephesians 3. Go to Ephesians 3. This will be the last one here. I want to just talk about this hidden mystery, the hidden wisdom, okay? Yeah. Ephesians 3, look at verse 1. For this cause I, Paul, the prison of Jesus Christ, for who? For you Gentiles, if you have heard of the dispensation of the grace of God, which is given to me to you, how that by revelation he made known unto me the what? The mystery, as I wrote it for a few words, whereby when you read, you may understand my knowledge in the mystery of Christ, which in other ages was not made known unto the sons of men, as it is now revealed unto his holy apostles and prophets of the Spirit, that the Gentiles should be fellow heirs and of the same body and partakers of his promise in Christ by the what? Whereof I was made a minister according to the gift of the grace of God, given unto me by the effectual working of his what? Uh, unto his power. See that this hidden wisdom which was given to Paul for us Gentiles to show forth the grace of God. So when Paul talks about the suffering for Christ's sake, he suffered because of what was revealed to him. It was the revelation of the mystery, right? So understand that when we, the more we understand truth, the more we go through truth, the more, we, uh, the more we're going to go through certain things, the more we're going to be rejected, the more we're going to face persecution, right? And it, 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 it's going to be from people who, I wouldn't say you least expect, but it's going to be the people that you care about, the people that you love, the people that you want to know truth so badly. Those are going to be the people that are rejecting you and persecuting you, all right? Because you expect the lost and dying world to do that. But those who are, 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 are members of another church or, or where you came from, those people who claim to have loved you, right? The people in your family who claim to have loved you, but now that you're speaking the truth and preaching the mystery according to the revelation of the, uh, preaching Jesus according to the revelation of the mystery, now they act like they don't know you. They say things that they're not even preaching Jesus anymore. Yeah, you're right. We're not preaching to Jesus according to his earthly ministry anymore. You're absolutely right. But we are preaching Jesus Christ, but it's according to the revelation of the mystery. Amen. Amen. But you have to teach them still. Oh, yeah, you definitely. By learning. Yeah. If you don't, then they're lost. Yeah. And the thing about it, you have to teach them 
according to wisdom. Okay, because most times, most times they, they most people don't want to hear what you know. Because remember now, they think they know what they know. So they don't want to hear what you know. But don't you want to point them in a way? You, you can't, but that's why I say you have to do it with wisdom. Depending on who it is, they're not going to hear it from you anyway. They ain't going to hear it anyway. Now. You, you know what I mean? So depending on who it is, they don't want it. Because most times people look at your previous lifestyle, they don't want to hear anything from you. <laughs> but in order to fulfill like our destiny, don't we have to just try something even if they don't even agree with us? No. We don't have to, like... No, because because the example that you're giving, I'm guaranteeing that you've already spoken to a person about this already. <laughs> you see that? So it's nothing you can do after that. No. So you leave it alone. You have to leave it alone. There's nothing you can do after that. You because, again, what? just like the, uh, the when people come to church to hear the word, you could, I could call people all day long. But unless they want to come, they won't come. You see that? You can tell somebody truth all day long. Unless they want to hear it and believe it, they're not going to believe it. Amen. You see, that, 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 there's no point in wasting your time. There's plenty of other people that you need to reach. There's no point in wasting your time on this particular person after you've given them a clear presentation of the gospel, which you have. That's why you're trying to figure out what you need to do after that. So, so now it's on them, it's on them at that point. And remember now, you're going to have people that you love go to hell. I'm just going to say it as blunt as that. You're going to have people that you love go to hell. That's just the, that's just the way it is. Some people are going to believe the things that were spoken. Some people are going to believe not. There are people that you love that will go to hell. There's nothing you can do about it because you cannot change a person's mind. Yeah, but, uh -huh. but see, what I see now, and I'm going to tell you this, is about a couple of my friends now who... Back in the day, they wouldn't do. You wouldn't even get them near a church door. Yeah. But by planting the seeds way back then, there you go. Now they beat me to, to Bible study. There you go. The church. Yeah. And I'm talking and, about 30 or 40 years ago. And so that's you all don't you can know do. if you planted the word the seed or not. But you do have to try. No, no. But you do know if you planted the seed or not. If you give somebody the truth, you've planted the seed. Now whether they want to believe it or not, that's on them. Once you give somebody a clear presentation of the gospel. That's why I say when you go to people, don't be, don't talk to people about, uh, uh, you know, you're talking about Jesus Christ back here. That's wrong. Don't go to people like that because they're not going to hear you. Give people a clear presentation of the gospel. You don't have to tell people they're wrong. You don't have to tell people anything. You tell people, listen, do you really trust and fully believe that Jesus shed his blood and on the cross and he died to pay for your sins and was buried and rose again the third day? Do you believe that? If they say yes, listen, you've given them a clear clear presentation of the gospel because they won't be and the problem the problem that most people face that do know how to write and divide is you deal with people on issues they can't understand you see that you can't deal with somebody on an issue about the jesus earthly ministry wasn't talking to us they don't understand that they don't understand you can't deal with somebody about the uh uh, uh not paying tithes when all they've been taught is to pay so you can't deal with people on that at first okay you have to get them to understand truth, and then they'll be able to see those things themselves. You won't have to tell them. That's why our job is to just give a plain, clear gospel. After that, you can deal with people on certain issues. Once a person has a, a listening ear, right? That's why you have to understand who's teachable and who's not. When you get to a person that is really open to hearing something about tithing or whether, whatever the case may be, then you can tell them. But at first, if a person is just trying to match wits, you try to tell them how much you know, they try to tell you how much they know, that's a wasted conversation. Now, once you've, tell, you've given them the message, are they not accountable for it now? They are, At exactly. That point? Yeah. So if you never go back and say anything else, they got the word. They, they got it. They got a clear presentation. You are not, you I mean, uh, they're going to be held accountable because now they what? Heard, they heard it. it. Because remember now, you have to hear it, believe it, and then what? Trust it. How can they hear it unless they have a preacher, Okay. If, the person, if, if, if a person has heard the gospel or a clear presentation of the gospel, meaning that our sins are forgiven, no matter what we have done or what we can do, they've heard that because of, of, because of what Christ has done. It's called the grace of God, the gospel of Christ. Once you've given them that, after that, it's nothing else you can do. If they don't want to hear it, they, don't, they just don't want to hear it. And a lot of times we can push people further away from the truth 
Because we try to change somebody's mind. We can't change their mind. That's the word. That's God's job. Once a person makes up their mind to do something, they're going to do it. If a person makes up their mind, just say, I'll go way to the extreme. If a person has made up in their mind to go and murder somebody, they're going to go do that. Okay? So, so if a person has made up in their mind after you've told them the, 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 the truth of God's word, if they made it up in their mind, you know what, I'm, I want to go study that a little more. They're going to go do that. If they made up in their mind my pastor is right, they're not going to go study. Right? I saw a couple of hands. Go ahead, Al. I've talked to people that agree with what you say about the resurrection, but I don't want a history lesson of the Jew, of, of the Jews' um, analogy. In other words, they don't want to hear the Jews' history. They just want to hear exact about the resurrection, about Jesus. Uh -huh. They don't want to hear about how the Bible fits in. Yeah, which, which, which again, they may not want to hear that when at first. Do with me, you know? Yeah, 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 yeah. And which again, they may not want to hear That's why I don't even tell people, when I tell people, they ask me where to start reading, just start in Romans. Because if you start in Romans, you'll learn enough about all of this back here. Right? But you're right. Um, you talked about you can't convince people against their will. Uh -huh. I know I talked about this before with Ben Franklin. Those who are convinced against their will are of the same mind still. Yep, yep, you're and right. Nothing true you're right. That. Because nothing's true. Exactly. Because right. if I have to change my way based on because of what you said, then that's really not my way. That's right. your and thinking. They, they and, you know, right back to where they were. Right back to where they started. So, yeah, you're absolutely right. Yeah, then what do you do when people have the will, have the faith, but they go into a church that leads them astray? They don't know that they're going opposite. What yeah. can you do? You can't do anything. You can't do anything because, again, most people that do that really are not trying to learn truth. They're trying to seek relationship with people, not with Christ. Yeah. See that most people that go to churches, denominational churches, because you gotta remember they have things for your kids, they have you know you know help if you need it. They have all things that deal with your natural, which is why people go there. You ha you your friends may go there, you know you feel a sense of uh, of uh, of uh, uh, a sense of camaraderie, uh, I guess you know. So you so you that's why people go to church. People don't go to church to learn the Bible sad to say that but they don't go to church to learn the bible because if they did they would not go to the churches they go to <laughs> you see you see what i mean so when people go to churches based on they're not going to churches based on the bible okay they're going to church based on something other than the bible maybe they know somebody they go there they know the pastor they know this they know that because if they were really students of the bible they would leave the church just like this because either they won't get the Bible or they'll get something that the preacher says that's conflicting with the word. But again, that is based on the person. There's nothing you can do after that. Once they know truth or have heard truth, then they decide to go to a church that doesn't preach truth. But again, they, they won't know because the hardest thing to, unless you understand what a counterfeit, unless you understand what the real bill looks like, it's hard, it's hard to tell a fake. It's hard because I know people who, who, who have that. I believe in Christ's faith in them, but they go to somewhere where they tell them you got to be baptized before you can even. But that's because they don't understand. They don't understand. They don't, they don't know, know truth. So they because, and they don't understand that. So again, the so only thing that you could do is show them scripture. If they don't abide by scripture, it's nothing you could say to somebody to change their mind. You can't make somebody who you want them to be. You can only tell them what you suggest. As a, 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 now when you, as it pertains to the word, you can tell them what God's word says. But you can't make somebody believe something. Otherwise, it's not their own belief. I'm just, um, you go ahead. Well, I'm just wondering with um, what um, Brother Billy is trying to say when you were younger. I'm sure your mother tried all she could to get you <laughs> in that place. <laughs> no, and I mean that, not, that. not yeah. just, I mean yeah. general, general. Yeah. I'm kind of like generalizing, I'm, and I don't mean to say you in particular, I'm kind of saying in general, yeah. you know, and I just believe that repetition 
Words. is the mother of learning. Uh, so it's good to keep putting that thing out there when the opportunity presents yeah, see, itself. Yes, that's the most important part. Because sometimes you, know, you put it out there where people don't yeah, want to hear. You just can't do it all the time. Yeah. Because like you said earlier, when we were out there, we didn't want to hear that. Uh -huh. We were doing our thing. And we say we weren't having fun, but we were having a good time. Uh -huh. and saying, good time. Uh -huh. So we got to just be careful when the doors of opportunity open. Then you step therein. Uh -huh. But you know your mother wanted you where you are today, mm -hmm. I'm sure, back then. Yeah, so you got to consider you. these things as yeah. well. They and, and, have and, not always <laughs> been in this place. And a good point, let me reiterate this because I don't want to say don't ever talk to somebody again. Mm -hmm. The good point that you said, when the opportunity presents itself, mm -hmm. okay, if, so, if I know somebody doesn't want to really hear the truth, I don't ever say it. Now, if they talk to me about the Bible, they know they know what they're going to get into. Mm -hmm. You see that? So they know what they're about to get into if they ask me anything about the Bible. Okay, so at that point, you really know, because you know what I'm going to say, you really want to hear what i got to say. Mm -hmm. And so therefore, I say it. Okay? And once you have you've done it, you've really planted the seed. Yeah. Uh -huh. You said earlier, somebody else is going to come along and water. Yeah. That's right. But it's just like when you go to court, if you ever hear a, a, an attorney when they are uh, trying to convince a jury, mm -hmm. or if somebody's testifying, they might say, the judge might say, strike it. Mm -hmm. But they've already oh, heard it. Exactly. So yeah. it's still in their mind. Yeah. Right. And what's gonna happen is when they need it, at some point, they're gonna remember it. Yeah. Just like the Bible tells you to train up a child in the way that he should yeah. be. Yeah. Now, that doesn't mean that child's gonna do everything right. Yeah. But at some point, if you train them right, Right is there. Yeah. It's in them. And yeah. then they can go back and, 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 and draw from feed that. off that, That's draw right. from that, yeah. because they've been taught it. Yeah. When you drop a word in, they yeah. got it. They got it. And they it, may not act on it. Exactly. And you, you may, may not, not ever it. You may not you, ever see it, just yes, like she the example about your mother. Your mother may not have ever seen you get to the point where she wanted to get to. Exactly. You see that? And and, and this is and it's a good thing to what you said, because I remember when I first start uh, uh to talking and teaching this message. And I remember, I used my mother off for example, and I remember because I got really angry. And because uh, I remember that I was teaching and I was going through it and she could never really hear it. She could, she, I just don't, I just don't, you know. And she never heard it. But then there was a preacher that she listened to on TV that she listened to him and he said the same things I was saying. And so my, I remember my wife telling me, she was like, yeah, but, uh, and rather than me rejoicing that she had the truth, I was angry because I was telling my wife, I'm, that, that's what I've been saying the whole time. Why she got to hear from him? You know? And so, and so, so understand that. This is a little punk kid. This, <laughs> yeah, yeah. And so understand that that sometimes will happen. And again, I had to learn from that because I really, when people didn't listen to me, I used to get angry, you know? And so, so again, the fact that she heard it, it was based on she's listening based on what she's heard from me. So I may not have been able to really, I, I planted the seed, this other gentleman may have watered, and now she understands. That's the whole point. Amen. That's the whole point, Amen. okay? So, uh, so somebody, you may be able to speak something, so then with somebody else who they uh, uh, deem to be somebody that could speak into their life, or whatever the case may be, they may, even they, they may hear, you know what, somebody else has said that to me. Let me take a look into this. You see that? That confused me a little because it's saying proactive or reactive. Yeah, yeah. You know, which one? Yeah, yeah. I'm a little confused. Yeah. If you're proactive, you're actively speaking the word. Uh -huh. If you're reactive, you're listening to what people are saying. Say. You just yeah, exactly. Exactly. Say. exactly. 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 And and a little both, I guess. and this this is a good point, and this that's good because and it can be both. It, 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 this is the thing. Now, proactive in the sense of now. The way, the way that I'm proactive, and me being proactive, I'm actually reactive. And I say that like this. When I'm proactive and I'm speaking the word to somebody, I ask them questions. Okay? And based on what they tell me, then I give them a piece of the word where they fall short at. You see that? So, in a sense, I'm being bold. I'm proactively talking to them. But I want to get them to a point to where they'll hear me. So what I do is allow them to take control of the conversation by giving me what they think they know. Okay? So I'm reacting based on what they said to me. So again, it could be both. Now, with being proactive in the sense of just preaching, 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 
I'm all for that. But to the same person who keeps rejecting, 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 now you need to get to a point where you become a little reactive. Wait till they tell you something, and then you go. You see that? But proactive, preaching to the same, because Paul said, Paul said, for me to say the same things to you is grievous, not grievous to me, but it's safe for you. You see that? that but again, he's talking to members of the body of Christ. But, but to say the same thing to people who just won't hear you, I think that becomes a little... Redundant, yeah, exactly. Redundant, and it becomes, I'm trying to think, it becomes of no avail to you. Because all that's going to do is, is make you angry and upset. Especially you keep giving it to somebody that you want to know and you want to love them, you want them to hear it. They're not, they may not hear from you, but you've done your job proactively and giving them the truth at one point. Now it might be somebody else's job. And then you continue doing the right things because... You know, they want in front you. of them, exactly. You keep doing the right thing in front of them. Yeah. And when it presents itself, like Sister Hobbs was saying, the opportunity presents itself. Yeah. You know, like sometimes you just don't give your opinion. Exactly. But when you ask me, now yeah. you got to listen. There, there you go. Right. See, because now it's my opportunity that, to tell there you. There you, you go. That's why I said most people who, who have rejected me, they know if they ask me anything about the Bible, and my, what you're telling me is you want to listen to what I got to say. Mm -hmm. Because you know exactly what I'm going to say, having already said it to you before. You see that? And that would be the opportunity that, that presents itself. Yep. Mm -hmm. And so uh, uh, a lot of times I even do that even with my wife. Uh, before I used to just try to push the word on her. But now I wait till she asks me a question. Mm -hmm. So because she knows me, if she asks me, that means she wants to hear it. Okay, so and so even then I try to cut it short, but I still give it because that now she's asking me, okay? So, so, so understand that there, there comes a time when we have to not only say it, but we also have to actually show them. You know, we talk about love and Christ and all those different things, and we have to show them, but understand that once it gets to a point that they're rejecting, understand that we have to be able at that point to show them the same love that we speak about. Okay? You can't be saying, I love Christ, I love Christ, and this is what works and, and, and what we do becomes important. Because it's not probable to God, it's probable to who? To men. Okay, because now they can see me showing love in spite of how somebody just treated me, right? People at my job, and I, I don't go around parading the people about church and the Bible and none of that, but when people see how I deal with certain situations, if there's anybody angry, go get Kevin, but I can't do because, you know, so when people see me, so now they pe people ask me all the time, well, you, you, do you go to church at all? It's something about you, you know, they're just... And then we get into a conversation, okay? And so understand that the way you react to certain things, people are noticing that. They're looking and they're seeing what you do, how you handle a certain situation. Now, sometimes you may not handle it right all the time. Okay, that's fine too. Don't, don't, if that's the case, don't allow anybody to trick you out of who you are in Christ. Oh, you see, you thought you were so, you always talking about the Bible. And the, okay, that's fine. I messed up this time. But that doesn't, mean, that doesn't change my position in Christ. You see that? Um, oh yeah, oh yeah. Um, I wanted to piggyback a little bit on what Sister Annette said about training children. Uh -huh. mm -hmm. I had raised five. Uh -huh. And when I train them about things, you think they forget. Yeah, yeah. And then when they grow up and have families, yeah, yeah. they start saying the same things that you that said. You said. <laughs> That's right. And yeah, I, yeah. I thought you forgot that. Yeah, no, I yeah. thought they were saying. Yeah. yeah. You know, it, it's still sticking in my And really, we didn't really want you to know that you were right when That's you told right. us. That's, That's the thing. Right. That's the key. That's the key. Yeah. <laughs> like, that's the yeah, that's the key. That's the key. And, and understand that that training goes a long way because there was a point in my life that you'd have thought I never went to church. Okay? And it has nothing to do with my parents. It had everything to do with the decision that I wanted to make at that time. Okay? Because they raised me in the admonition of the Lord and what they knew at the time. Uh but the, the some decisions that I made, it would seem like they didn't they didn't raise me. Okay? So but understanding that we, I did, I never remember. Now there were some things that I just couldn't do. I couldn't go so far to do this thing because of what was taught to me. Okay, so, so, so again, the same way, even now that we're saved and our spiritual walk, there's some things that we are gonna do. We may give in to the flesh because we're just not strong enough. We don't have the, enough knowledge and power to, to to not do that. The more we grow, the less we'll do those things. Doesn't mean that I'm not still a child of God. 
It just means that in that area, I'm weak in that area. But I don't know the word enough. I don't have enough relationship to have the strength to overcome that. Okay? That's why you come to church and hear the word. And that's why we've got to make sure that we're in that word. So when, like you said earlier, the carnal man beats us up because yeah. we have faltered in our faith uh -huh. or in our walk. Uh-huh. That we don't, you know, fall short mm -hmm. because and of what they're saying. Yourself. Oh, now you, you, I thought you were saying. Yeah. So we got to be careful that yeah. we're in that word because that's what's going to strengthen us. So when the folks see us fall, yeah. that we don't react to yeah. what they've said. And I often tell you, all, and I often tell you all the time: if you continue to look at me, you're going to continue to see imperfection. Exactly. But if you look at Christ, there's no imperfection in Him. Right. You see that you're looking at me, which I should be doing the things in accordance and align with Christ, but I'm, I'm going to be imper imperfect, right? On this earth, I'm going to be imperfect, okay? I'm not going to be perfect, right? And so understand that Christ's perfection, even in my imperfection, right, shows our righteousness. It's based on him, not anything that we can do, okay? Our righteousness comes from him. And uh, God creates in us true holiness and true righteousness, okay? All right. The carnal mind can't comprehend that. Though. They can't. They can't. Because again, the carnal mind is focused on what we do in our flesh. Mm -hmm. People hold, even people that don't even know anything about church, people hold you accountable to what you do in your flesh. Uh, even when talking to uh, different young people about peer pressure, right? You, you are deemed to be the uh, popular kid in school if you do this. Mm -hmm. And you, you know, if you wear your clothes like this, if you have these shoes on, if you do this, if you talk to the women this kind of way, if you talk to the men this, you know, that people glory in what you do in your flesh. Mm -hmm. Because the only thing they can compare it to is somebody else in their imperfect flesh. Right. You see that? Which Paul says, you compare each other against each other, you become fools. Because, mm -hmm. right, I'm no, even though I may do this better, doesn't mean I'm better, I'm better than you because I'm still imperfect, just like you are. But Christ is perfect. All right. Anything else? All right, let us pray. Father God, we thank you now for your grace and your mercy. We thank you for your love, your understanding, your guidance. We thank you for who you are. Father God, we thank you right now for the time uh, that you've given us uh, 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 to study your word, uh, to rightly divide your word, uh, to strengthen us, oh God. We thank you right now that the, uh, uh, we're, we're, not, uh, we're not just only have the uh, appearance of of God, but Father God, we have the power to go along with it. Uh, we thank you that we not just know ab uh, about you, but we actually know you. And we thank you for that right now. We actually continue to bless us and strengthen us, oh God. Uh, uh, strengthen us in the areas that we're weak. Uh, help us to uh, 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 not concede to the flesh, oh God, but to uh, uh, be led by the Spirit before we will not fulfill the lust of the flesh if we're led by the Spirit. Uh, we thank you right now. We actually bless this ministry as we continue to go forth. Bless each and every member under the sound of my voice. Uh, that they may be edified in spirit and in truth, that they're able to walk according to your way and according to your will. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. Amen.